Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is Terrifying Tuesday. First and foremost, I do hope that each and every one of you are having a great morning, evening, dawn, day or dusk, all that lovely stuff because life really is too short as is. Please do like, share and subscribe. I love seeing each and every one of you every Monday through Friday, permitting my schedule and of course major holidays. And then also do me a really huge favor and check out the information in the description box for more more, more uh, uh, information on the daily films, such as your brief synopsis, your starring cast, runtime of the cut I am watching, uh, along with an NPAA rating, uh, if there is one, uh, director, some trivia if I find anything worthwhile of mentioning, which today don't look for any trivia, it was kind of a, uh, a boring when it came to any kind of trivia for, for today's movie, so, so definitely don't look for that today, but there is definitely a link for a trailer in this in the description box so you have a little more information in there to check out so you can have a bigger taste of, of the uh, um, daily movie that I'm talking about and maybe it'll help you decide if you wish to track down a copy or stream it or do whatever it is that you do to watch movies uh, it'll hopefully help you help you uh, either persuade you or to watch it or not watch it uh, hopefully to watch it that means I'm doing somewhat of a decent job I guess but either way, let's move on to the film of the day. This one came out all the way back in 1969, and this is none other than The Horrors of Malformed Men. Yes, this is the uh, Synapse Films release. This is the alternative artwork that that, that it came with. Uh, it does have, this is the... Uh, um, uh, original artwork that that comes in this Synapse DVD. It's from the Asian Cult Cinemas collection. Uh, I happen to like the the uh, other artwork with the Japanese writing on there. I think that is very very cool. Uh, it's definitely sticks out a lot more than the other one. Granted, I don't understand a word there is on the cover, but that is completely okay. Now, um, there is a brand new, or not brand new, but a newer uh, Blu-ray release of this through Arrow Video. So do check that out if you want. If you're looking for a, a good crisp Blu-ray, definitely I would say check that out. Uh, Arrow usually knocks it out of the park with their transfers. Um, you know, it's not all. It's hit or miss on their special features. It's it, it's the transfers that that uh, are mostly the uh, uh, of great recognition for their stuff. Which, um, this one right here, the Synapse one, doesn't have a bad transfer. Uh, it just could, it could easily be cleaned up and, and a, uh, nicer, nicer presentation could be done. Uh, other than that, I think it does, it, it's a perfectly well-rounded, uh, uh, release here from Synapse. Um, I mean, I guess it could have more special features. Uh, as far as special features go on there, there is a, uh, uh, uh malformed memories, um, mini featurette that's about 22 to 25 minutes long. Uh, it goes over different different uh, uh, aspects of the movie itself. I know that um, the director of Tetsuo the Iron Man, he, he does a... Uh, um, uh, uh, an interview during it, so it's a pretty interesting thing. And then, the, what was the other special feature on there? There was, oh, there's... Um, uh, 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 running commentary track from, uh, who is it from, uh, la, 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 film critic Mark Schilling, so there is, there is a, uh, um, a commentary track r that ran on there, I tried to watch it with a commentary track, unfortunately it was kind of boring me a little bit, so I, um, went back to the normal Japanese audio and, and uh, uh, watched it that way. Um, it is definitely worthwhile. Um, I can't say anything really bad about this movie, other than it gets a little slow. Um, there are some spots where it feels slightly pretentious, but that's okay. I still really, really like this, and I'd like to upgrade it to that new Sweet Arrow Blu-ray, because I think it is 100% worth owning for any, any real... Um, uh, connoisseur of Japanese cinema, um, people that are into uh, Itogawa Rampo, and that's that's who uh, um, 
wrote the story for this and it, and it uh, uh, eventually blossomed into this film that we have here and they they've uh, um, ad made ad adaptations to other film to other uh, stories in his in his uh, uh, catalog but this one right here is the one that sticks out the most at least for me it does it's the most memorable just because it is so visually it is so stunning and there's just so much going on there's so many layers of good here and I can't uh, um, really uh, uh, be negative about this release I think it is uh, about this film in general I just it just it speaks to me it's beautiful now as far as uh, what is it about um, it's about this guy who is a uh, it, in a he's a uh, medical student or surgeon type uh, he ends up uh, 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 in an insane asylum, and he ends up, um, uh, this guy named the Bald Man comes in and tries to kill him, and he ends up killing him, and away he goes. Uh, while he's out on the run, he ends up killing another person. Uh, then he ends up finding himself, uh, impostering uh this dead man that uh is part of this uh, uh very prestigious family that is on its outs as far as uh its its financial backings are going i believe it was the komoda family is if memory serves me correct but either way the komoda family is is getting really down on its luck they're 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 uh, um the head of the family has has passed away uh and this 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 Hirosuke Hirosuke I believe is his name. Uh, he decides to to uh, Im, uh, be an imposter for this dead man of the Komoda family because he sparks one hundred percent resemblance to him all the way down to a scar on the bottom of his foot, which you know it it uh, looks like the swastika, but it's the uh, the Buddhist version where it's flipped around going the other way. Um, it's not a Nazi swastika. Swastika, just to let you know, uh, for anybody that does watch this and they see that and, and before they jump to any conclusions, that is not what you think it is. It looks like it, but it's not. But either way, he's he he is one hundred percent resemblance down to this person. Uh, the only difference is is he there, there's little things that he messes up here and there, like he forgets to wear glasses um, because the uh, the uh, um, original member of the Komoda family that he's impostering wore glasses. He was also a left-handed man, so he had to learn. How, he's having to learn how to do all these things uh, over again without looking too. Suspicious. Suspicious. Um, a lot of it, they're easily able to write off because he they they thought he was dead um, all the way up to the point to where they buried him. Uh, and this this Hirosuke uh, decides he's going to dig him up, and he and he uh, quickly is able to. Um, persuade these people that he he is actually the Komoda, the head of the Komoda family. Uh, it's um. It's quite a uh, interesting predicament you have going on here. It uh, has lots of uh, mystery mystery vibes going on. It, it definitely is something that um, has more of a thriller vibe, is what I would I would call it, than a horror film. Although it does have a lot of horror aspects, it, it's almost like a Japanese island of Doctor Moreau in ways, because there he's this this. Uh, um, this man that Hirosuke ends up going to see eventually uh, on this island, who he who is his father, by the way, uh, he goes there to. Um, to basically see what's going on because all this money of, from the Komoda family has been invested into into this island, in, into creating whatever uh, utopia is going on there. They just haven't gotten a chance to witness what's going on yet. Uh, they they end up going there and then they meet uh, Hirosuke's father who is a um, deformed man. He has uh, like stuff growing out of his head. Um, he has webbed hands and feet. Um, he, he's very, makes very strange, like, like almost inorganic moves. It's, it's very, um, uh, 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 
not by the book as far as uh, filming goes, as far as uh, what you want your actors to do. But it definitely, it is so impactful. And uh, it uh, um, really delivers a whole lot extra to the film, in my opinion. Uh, the uh, Hirosuke's uh, um, father is one of my favorite characters of the whole movie, even though his character, a lot of his dialogue does come across as pretentious in places because he is very... Um, He's delivered in a very artistic uh, um, uh, vibe that is that is um, uh, far surpasses uh, uh, Doctor Moreau by any means because Doctor Moreau wasn't willing to go to the to the lengths that uh, Hirosuke's father is going to in this film. Uh, it, it's quite impressive. And then while they're around looking on this in this uh, uh, on this island, they do find out that he has created a utopia. It's a utopia of, of people that were once born normal and they were made into hideously deformed, malformed creatures. Uh, such as, like, as you can see here, there is a uh, very deformed man attached to a beautiful woman's back. Uh, there are um, people that have uh, sheep uh, growing out of them. There's, there's these strange... Uh, um, dance routines that are going on, people that are painted completely gold or silver, uh, lots of uh, eroticism going on, especially for 1969, it, it, it was a, uh, uh, a boundary pusher because, you know, back then sex wasn't really... Um, uh, 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 it was more of a taboo when it came to film. You could talk about it, you could insinuate, but you could never like show to the to the degree of what they were showing because there is a lot of nudity in this one. Surprisingly, from 1969. Now, as far as um, uh, what else we have going on here, you do find out that there are other intentions from from Hirosuke's father. Um, he he fully intends on on making him a a, a almost unwilling um, participant in in the uh, uh, development of this utopia. He wants the he wants him to help uh, deform these people even more and because he's such a skilled surgeon uh he even uses his his ability to cut apart this this uh deformed creature here of these two women or two people caught together it's a man and a woman but either way um he he definitely uh, uh, has has much much deeper darker intentions and then you find out you know that um <clears throat> Because during all this that's going on, uh, uh, one of the things that Hirosuke ha um, has to do, or tech, like ha doesn't have to do, but something that he does, that um, he apparently the person that he's impersonating was having sex with, with a with one of the maids, uh, one of the maids from the. Uh, the uh, Komodo family, and so there's a, a little sex scene stuff that go on with her, but um, they are being basically uh, 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 blackmailed into the fact that somebody knows what's going on. Somebody is even attempting to put to kill different people inside of the uh, Komodo family. Uh, there's even a bath scene where where a woman starts to get out uh, of the tub, and she l luckily looks down and she sees a couple of extremely poisonous snakes hanging out there wanting to uh, take a jump out of her ass. Um, yeah, so so there's um, a lot of layers going on here, so definitely um, give this one a whirl. Uh, as far as any kind of ratings would go on a technical side, I'm going to give this thing a 4 out of 5 because it is a it is almost flawless feeling. It is a masterpiece. Um, this is one I would hold up there with films like Kuroneko or Oni Baba or um, uh, uh, what else is another really good one? Uh, um, 
Oh, shoot, Curran Echo was uh, the one about the cat. I'm thinking of Kaida and Kwaidan. Um, that one is one of my absolute favorites, uh, especially on the uh, anth anthology aspect. My only beef with Kaidan is the fact that it's like two and a half hours long. It is a long son of a bitch. Uh, unlike this one, this is running at, at an hour and 40 minutes, if memory serves me correct. Uh, uh, yeah, an hour and 39 minutes, so give or take a minute. Either way, um, it, it's highly, highly worth it. Uh, as far as um, uh, uh, entertainment goes, um, I would say this is probably a 3 or a 4 out of 5. This is like a, a 7 or an 8 out of 10 kind of film. Uh, it, it's uh, um, only for people that like a little bit of artistic vibe with their, with their, um, with their cinema, especially... Um, the debaucherous stuff because this one it definitely goes into levels that um a lot of films didn't go to uh uh that early in in uh film cinema film history uh a lot of stuff didn't start getting really risque until till the till the 70s um especially the mid to late 70s that's when people really started pushing boundaries especially in japanese culture and japanese cinema in general um which is is one of my very favorite things to one of my favorite uh, uh i guess i would say subgenre of of film next to uh, uh slashers and necrophilia movies uh japanese horror is is um uh probably a very close third and i uh can't um stress enough that some of you need to go out as outside of your boxes and check out some foreign films uh especially um uh, people that have a little more of a, a respect for 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 film you'll you'll definitely uh, enjoy this one um, other than that yeah it is what it is it is a masterpiece uh, either way uh, definitely check it out get either the synapse films release or if you really want to go up update it go with that arrow blu-ray i'm sure that is what i what you would call the definitive release of this movie in in all in all all right guys love your faces i'll see you tomorrow i'm not 100 percent what i got lined up um i think i'm going to do a cannibal movie i think i got two cannibal movies i'm going to be lining up this week both from severin films uh either way i got some awesome shit coming